I'm going to give you an overview on converting from Procare version 9 to V10, but it's also important to sign up for the free webinar on conversion where you can ask questions and we'll cover things in more detail. Right now I'm at the ProCareSupport.com site and to get to the conversion instructions, after the .com I'm going to add a slash and then the word convert, C-O-N-V-E-R-T, and just hit enter. And it'll take me to the conversion instructions. You'll have links on this page to all the information that you're going to need. The most important link is to download the conversion instructions in PDF format. You can do that right here from the main part of the screen or also over on the left hand side the conversion instructions are available. That'll open it up in a PDF that you can print and it is important to go through this entire set of instructions and check off the things as you go to make sure you're doing everything that you need to do to be successful with the conversion. Now I'm going to switch over to ProCare version 9. There are a few things in version 9 you need to do first before you convert. One of those is to go into Family Data and Accounting, go to your General Reports, Accounting Reports, and we need to close both the Deposit Report, letter K, and the Transaction Summary, letter L. Let's start with the Deposit Report. You may print out the current Deposit Report as a record of what's in this deposit, and then you'll go ahead and click Close. Yes, I do want to close the deposit. You'll also go to the Transaction Summary and do the same thing. Click Close. Yes, I want to close the transaction. We're going to exit here and we'll exit out of the reports. Another thing we'll need to do is go to the Employee Data and Payroll module and make sure that all of our employees have at least something assigned as their work department. I'm going to go to the Edit button here and we'll see in the lower left this employee does indeed have infants assigned as a work department. Then we can arrow down to the next employee and we'll see that this one does not. Amy Collins has something assigned called All Departments, which may mean that she was a floater and worked in whichever department was needed, but for purpose of the conversion we do need to assign a department for her. So I'm going to assign her to Toddlers. And then you would go through each of the employees to make sure they all had a department. We'll click Exit. And I'm going to exit back to the main screen. There are several other kind of housekeeping things like that you'll want to do before converting. Please follow the instructions at ProCareSupport.com slash convert. So now I'm ready to do the conversion. I'm going to sign out. I'm going to go to the help menu at the top and I'm going to choose to download a ProCare Support file. Here I'll type in the password which is C for convert and then V10. CV10. We'll click Start. The download's complete and now I can choose which of my locations I want to export. So basically we're creating an export file that the, we will then import into version 10. We need to select a place where this export file will be saved and I'm going to choose to put that on my desktop as a convenient location. We'll say OK. And then I'll click Start. And since I did all the things I needed to ahead of time, uh, the conversion goes smoothly and it says uh, the export is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and exit and I'm out of version 9 now and I'm going to move over to ProCare version 10. So there are a few things we need to do in V10 before we're ready to import that conversion file. One of those things is that we need to set up the names of our locations, particularly if we have more than one location we're going to manage in ProCare because during the conversion it's going to ask us which location we want to bring this over to. To set up your locations you'll go to the configuration menu at the top and choose system. In here you'll double click on regions and schools and then you can set the name of your region if you want to by clicking edit. We happen to be located in the Medford, Oregon area, which is part of Southern Oregon, so I might want to call my region Southern Oregon. And I'll click Save and Exit. And then I'll click the plus sign next to the region code to set up the names of my schools. Now if you just have one school, this isn't as crucial for the conversion. You'll just have the one school to choose from, but it's especially important if you have more than one. So I am going to go ahead and edit the school name and I'm going to call this one Little 
red school house number one and I could put in the name of my director and the other information but for now I'll click save and exit and I have a second location I'm going to be managing as well so since I'm going to eventually be converting two locations I'm going to want to add that second location I'll click add school and I'll put the name of the school up here I'll call this one little red school house number two and I need to give that a code I'm going to call that S2 just for school two and we'll click save and exit so at least I've got the two locations set up I'm now going to exit exit again and now I also need to set up licensing for those two locations which modules have I purchased for those locations because during the conversion it will only be able to convert over information for which I'm licensed to do this we'll go to the configuration menu at the top and choose license we'll see at the bottom that we have in this case 99 licenses available that's because I'm in a demo mode yours would probably say one two three something like that you'll select the type of license you're using for each location either a mini ProCare or full ProCare and then mark off the modules that you're going to be using at those locations in this case FD is family data FA family accounting AG agency accounting MT meal tracker AT attendance tracking ED employee data PR payroll and EL expenses and ledger so on this case I'm going to use licenses for each of those modules at both locations I'll click save and exit so now I've got a couple more things to do if I'm going to be converting either payroll or Tuition Express I've got a couple of other setup things so let's look at Tuition Express first I'll go to the configuration menu at the top and say system and I'm going to go to my regions and schools where we were earlier we'll double click and we'll go location by location we need to set up the Tuition Express account number for each location that we're converting right now I'm just going to convert location number one so I have location one selected I can double click on it or I can go to set options down here at the bottom the place to enter your Tuition Express account number is under family accounting and you'll see it right here Tuition Express account number so if you were converting Tuition Express make sure you have your account number in there ahead of time I'm not going to be doing that today so I won't enter an account number the other thing to do while we're in the system configuration screen is to get ready to convert payroll for that to work we need to import tax tables for state and federal to have available as part of the conversion process so I'm going to scroll down the screen here under the section called accounting management and we're going to keep scrolling down until we get to payroll there's payroll and we're going to double click on payroll formulas here you'll see I don't currently have any federal or state tax tables installed that will prevent me from being able to complete the conversion so I'm going to say download and update I'll pick the year that I want tax tables for and click continue yes it's going to install them and in a few moments I have both my state and federal tables updated so now I'm ready to go ahead and import the file from version 9 but there's one last thing I should do and that is now that I've got my basic things configured in V10 I should make a backup that way if I need to go back and convert again for some reason I've got a blank backup that just has my overall settings without any actual families or employees who have yet been converted you can see that by going to family accounting I don't have anybody in here right now I'm gonna go back to the ProCare home screen to make a backup you simply go to utilities database backup restore and click the backup button if you happen to have a data hosted version of ProCare this does not apply uh, all the backups are handled by us with data hosting and in a few moments the backup is completed it'll ask you if you want to copy the backup offline meaning to a flash drive or another folder somewhere usually you'd say yes but for purposes of this demo I'm going to say no and we'll exit now we've got our backup made so we're ready now to import the data from version 9 to import the data we'll go to the supervisor utilities menu and choose data import export here we're going to pick import and we're going to get a warning this is going to be telling us that we need to choose a time to import when other people are not trying to access ProCare 
For example, if you're in a situation where you have multiple locations using Procare, other people would need to be out of Procare at the time you do the conversion. The conversion writes a very large file to the database and it slows things down tremendously. So pick a period of time when other people don't need to be working in Procare in the evening or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And then I need to choose the file that I want to import. I'll say Open File. I'm going to browse to my desktop. And here's the file. It has the name of my center from version 9, Little Red Schoolhouse 1 in the city. And then it ends in .v10. So you can tell it's the right file. So we'll click once on that. Let me move this up into the middle of my screen more. And then we'll choose Open. And then we select the school to import to. So this is why it's so important to set up the names of the locations ahead of time in version 10. So I'm going to choose to import this to location number 1. Click Next and you'll get green check marks for each of the modules that it's ready to convert. Anything that's unchecked will not be converted if for some reason you purposely do not want to uh, convert a certain section. For example, perhaps you've chosen to start fresh with agency accounting and you're, if you choose not to convert that, you can uncheck it and then at the bottom you'd need to type the words I accept to agree that you're not trying to convert that information. I'm going to click back and return to this screen with everything checked again. So I'm going to go ahead and convert everything. I'll click Next. Here I get a screen because I have Meal Tracker to choose to map my old meals like B for breakfast over to what that will be called in V10 and this example BR for breakfast. I'm going to map my S1 snack as an AM snack, my S2 snack as a PM snack, and I don't serve a third snack so I'm going to leave that blank. We'll click Next. And now I have a screen because I have agency accounting asking me if I want to create brand new agencies called Department of Human Resources and Jackson County Outreach or perhaps I want that to be just called something different in V10. Maybe I want uh, DHR to just be called the state and Jackson County to simply be called county. I'm going to go ahead and click Next and then I'm ready to start importing data. This will go fairly quickly on my machine as I have a limited amount of sample data. It could take a while depending on the amount of data it has to import. So it's successful. I'll click OK. I'm done with the import. And the last thing it asks me to do is run repair. I'll say yes. It brings the data up to the current build for version 10. And once the repair is done, we'll take a quick look at the families that we've converted. We'll say OK. If I now go to Family Data and Accounting, you'll see that I have a list of all my accounts that came over from version 9. And those are the basic steps involved in converting from version 9 to V10. Again, please sign up for the webinar and read the written instructions. Thank you.